Those who quit their job due to their employers asking them to do something which you considered to be morally wrong. What's your story? I was waiting tables at a local restaurant. Being the clumsy dip I am, I accidentally dropped a plate of food in the kitchen. My manager just looked at me and told me to pick it up, put it back on the plate, and serve it. I refused. I was quickly fired short after. However, the restaurant was shut down for health violations a few months later, so justice was served. A favorite story of mine growing up, my sister's best friend ordered a burger from Burger King. As she is watching them through the window the guy drops it on the ground. Another guy says just pick it up. The first guy turns around, looks at my sister's friend, looks back at the second guy, and says I can't, she saw me. I had a crappy door to door sales job and they told us to specifically target the elderly and vulnerable. I quit after one day. My buddy had a crappy door to door job for a day. When he was unable to sell the crappy product his first day, the boss left him in the city two hours away. It was something where they all carpooled so he just left him there. So that guy's truck mysteriously got vandalized when he left it during the carpool that week. My dad. His boss wanted him to work on my little brother's fourth birthday, which happened to be a Saturday, so it's double pay, and he's under no obligation to be there. He told them he wasn't going to miss his son's birthday. Boss says, you know you can buy a lot of presents with double time. Dad says, don't care, I'm not missing my kid's birthday. Boss, the kid's gonna have a lot of birthdays. Dad, yeah, and I'm gonna be there for every one of them. Dad got laid off a few weeks later. My old boss used to try to have me only input certain hours on my time sheet. I continuously refused and he kept harassing me. I gave him a warning. I let him know that I would pursue legal action. He would not report it to his boss but he continued to harass me. He ended up fired within 2 months. Butthole. And this wasn't like 42 hours to 40 hours. This was 52-55 hours down to 43 hours. Yeah that is highly illegal. My dad was a hospital administrator at a mental health hospital. He had between 60 and 90 patients in his facility at any given time, plus several outpatient groups going on. Of those 60-90, there were a few that simply weren't going to get better. After working with them for several months, looking over their history, and knowing what was going on with them mentally chemically, he knew that them staying in the hospital wasn't going to help them. There wasn't anything he could do for them, so he went to discharge them. The owners told him not to and to keep them inpatient for as long as their insurance medicare would pay for it. They wanted to bleed these people dry, even knowing they wouldn't get better. My dad refused. He was fired 8 weeks later. Was an assistant team leader in the produce department for Whole Foods. Basically every managerial task was thrust onto me by our worthless team leader who only ever wanted to do the wet case every day and nothing else. In a ho, one of these tasks was doing the schedule. Over the holidays one of our team members went down with a serious stomach ailment. I can't remember exactly what it was but he had to have surgery and was out basically throughout crunch time at the market November through January, recovering and all that. Well while he was out, obviously he racked up a bunch of medical bills as well as normal day to day bills since, you know, he wasn't working, so when he came back he asked for more hours. I said sure, no problem. We ran a lot of our team into the ground and they would love some extra days off, little more flexibility in their schedules. And since we were running light on labor anyhow I had plenty of money in my allotted budget to give this kid what he needed. Two weeks later I get called into the assistant store team leader's office and I'm told to take this kid off the schedule. He can only work 19.5 hours a week. Because any more than that and he qualifies for a bump up in our health insurance policy. I told the boss I was already running a skeleton crew and I straight up need this kid working more hours. He says nope. Give those hours to one of the janitors. Now I got nothing against the janitorial crew but they're not trained on well. Anything in the produce department. So the next day I go back into the managerial's office and after having another day to think about it, I'm freaking furious. How can I go to this kid that is struggling to pay bills, go to school, all this crap and tell him, you're fricked, 
this is Whole Foods. Up to this point I had been nothing but impressed by how they took care of their employees. This was like 2012 to 2013 BTW. I go back in pleading this kid's case and the manager breaks it down for me. The way his bonuses work and the rest of the admin team is that they get a percent of the total store profit based on projections. And from my understanding of the store itself has employees racking up massive medical bills well that gets deducted from those profits as well. I couldn't believe it. This guy was willing to frick this kid's life with debt so he could get maybe a few thousand dollar bonus at the end of the year. If that. At that point I was already fed up doing everything for my department's team leader so I reached out to a local competitor to see if they had any openings and sure enough they needed a produce manager for a store 45 minutes away. The next day I put in my two weeks. Told them exactly why cashed in on close to $3,000 worth of PTO I had never gotten around to using. And the kid? Well since I left and the department was already operating as a skeleton crew they literally had to give him the hours he needed lest the department become absolutely fricked. Good for you and glad that your departure gave the kid the hours he needed. Worked on a pilot season of a sitcom. There were child actors on the show. One day I overheard one of the parents bragging to their friend on the phone that they aren't working. The kid is I chose not to come back for the second season after I saw that. Worse than that was my dad who caught a parent feeding a baby Benadryl so it would stay asleep for a scene in a soap opera. He reported it and nothing happened. I didn't exactly quit. But I refused to do something and got fired for it. I worked for a company that did the technical support for the Circuit City extended warranty. We were directed to transfer customers to a sales line to buy antivirus software before we did any software troubleshooting short of a full format and recovery. These were the rules. Is the problem clearly a hardware failure? Yes. Fill out the ticket to send them the replacement part. Is there a possibility that the customer's problem might not be hardware related? This is 99% of calls with the amount of troubleshooting we were able to do. Transfer them to the line to buy antivirus software. And tell them to call back after they've installed it and ran a virus scan. Then you could proceed through the usual troubleshooting steps. If they did not want to do this. Whether because they had their own antivirus software. Or didn't have the money. The only option you could give them was a full format and restore. You could not help them with backing up their data. All you could do is walk them step through step through reformatting their hard drive and reinstalling the factory software. If the problem persisted after that. We could send hardware. The thing was. There were so many hardware issues that you can troubleshoot much more quickly than you can run a restore. And you don't ever need to do that to prove a hardware failure. Let me go into device manager. Delete and reinstall some drivers. Pop into CMOS and check and make sure everything is set up right. Nope. You can't do that until they've bought software. What made this even worse to me was these people had already paid way too much for an extended warranty, and were told that the main reason to get the warranty was the great technical support you would get, because usually hardware didn't fail but you'd have other problems we could help with. Nope, we were just there to generate upsells or delete your hard drive. Geek Squad is well known for this nonsense. I was a teller at Wells Fargo for a few months. It was more of a sales position than anything else. We were instructed to send any customer with any kind of issue to a banker so they could open them new accounts instead of just fixing their problem. They especially targeted elderly people. I flat out refused to do that and would instead fix any problems that I was capable of. Management repeatedly told me to be a team player. They couldn't care less that I never made any calculation mistakes with the money. On one slow day I watched the manager walk over to a banker. Hand her a $20, and tell her to open an account. I don't know if it was opened in her name or someone else's. A few times I was asked why I didn't ask a customer in the drive through to come in and open a credit card. They never liked my answer of, they're in the drive through because they don't want to come inside. I was miserable every day there until I quit. I have an account at WF and every time I go in I can't help but think that it would be miserable to work there. Always managers just standing around and watching everyone. Having like 3 people ask how my day is and then direct me to the clearly open rep who is waving me over. Feels so constricting. I worked as a receptionist at a doggy daycare boarding training facility for one whole day. During my training, 
I learned that the position is responsible for upselling various packages for boarding stays. Your dog gets a treat every day. A softer bed, etc. Which multiple employees admitted never actually got provided. It was basically a peace of mind fee so the owner could feel better about leaving their dog while they were away thinking they gave their dog a luxury stay. But really all the dogs stayed in the same tiny kennels. Think like an animal shelter set. Up. The final straw was when a woman came to pick up a dog that had been there for boot camp. A two week stay at the facility with daily one on one training sessions with a professional trainer. They do a little demo when you pick up your pet to show what the dog has learned during their stay and then they rope you in for more lessons. Before the woman arrived, the trainer admitted he hadn't spent any time with the dog at all, and the dog had basically been left in the kennel for its whole stay. Based on the casual reaction of all the other employees present, this was totally normal. The girl that was training me told me it was basically my job to talk the pet owner through the demo about how good the dog had been and make it sound like the dog has made great progress but could benefit from additional lessons. I told them I wasn't comfortable lying to customers and refused to come back. I wanted the job because I love dogs, but these people were cheating pet owners out of a ridiculous amount of money and it made me so sick. I regret not doing more to make what they were doing public, but I was young at the time and didn't know what to do. As a consumer of such services I'd be horrified to know this. Please write a scathing review on Yelp so we don't send our doggies there. I was probably 16 stroke 17 at the time and the only certified lifeguard at a local water park everyone else was company qualified, whatever that means. Anyway, one day a very large and severe thunderstorm was moving in on the horizon and as soon as I saw lightning I, naturally, blew my whistle and ordered the patrons out of the section I was monitoring and radioed my co-workers to do the same. Almost immediately, the owner came huffing and puffing over to me and demanded to know what the frick I was thinking. Um, the storm is about to be right on top of us and I'm responsible for the safety of our customers. So, I had them get out. Is something wrong you're costing us money that's what's wrong. We're not closing for the day by this point. There were a number of reasons I should have left quit and I finally did. After calmly handing the owner my whistle I looked him in the eyes and said you know what. I can't do this anymore. I quit. And I hope you remember this when somebody finally dies at this shithole. While I'm not sure if he remembers our conversation. Sadly a child did drown at the facility less than a month after I left and the place finally shut down. Part of me feels responsible for the drowning as it's possible that I could have been monitoring his section that day. Oh well. I was working at an after school club when I was 17. We were chronically short staffed and at one point I was in charge of 15 children ages 4 11 in two different areas, with a door in between. Over the legal ratio and illegally being asked to leave small children unsupervised. After sorting out a fight involving hitting each other with wooden trains that I'd missed. I walked back to a 10 year old convincing a 5 year old that she should eat blue paint. There was red paint on her chin already. I quit that evening. I wasn't ready to be responsible for a child getting hurt because my boss couldn't manage her staffing issues. And the supervisor 20 years my senior was sitting with 6 children quietly on computers in another room. Infuriating. I wasn't ready to be responsible for a child getting hurt because my boss couldn't manage her staffing issues. Sounds like the daycare where I used to work. My boss. Not in these exact words. By the way, no one can get a lunch break today. Because someone called in sick and I'm too stingy to hire a substitute. I was the manager of a development team and while I was on vacation I came back and found out the owner had been giving random tasks to one of the devs that took him out of his project cycle. Our devs had a large bonus wrapped up in completing the project on time. I told the owner he had better not do that again. Any work he needs from the devs needs to go through me. He said no way, it's his company. I told them it was unethical to put roadblocks in front of his people, especially if they risked their bonus on it. He said he would do what he want. I quit. He asked me to reconsider. I said sure. You send all dev work through me. And I am back. He said no. I got a new job. Fun postscript. A year and a half later I had to testify in court against them for unethical business practices. Other reasons. Not this. Haha. <laughs> 
they didn't outright ask me to do anything immoral, but their business practices were inherently unethical. Before I knew any better, I got a job working at a for-profit college as a financial aid administrator. I didn't realize just how fricked up it all is. So what these schools do is target low-income people to get them into career training programs, such as medical assisting or dental assisting. Most of these students are minority single mothers who are unemployed or very low income and living off of state benefits. The reason they target low-income people is because they will qualify for the full amount of a Pell Grant, in addition to student loans, which means the school will get more money out of this individual in order to afford the program. The student will need to take out the max amount offered in student loans in addition to the Pell Grant per award year. The school does this because they are guaranteed to get paid by the government once they get the student enrolled, and they don't have to pay it back if the student drops. The student gets that bill, whatever the financial aid doesn't cover. The student is set up on a monthly payment plan to cover the rest. If they don't finish, they still have to pay the school what they owe in addition to the financial aid they were basically bamboozled into taking out. If the student drops, which most of them do, then they're stuck with a fuck ton of debt and they can't transfer any of those credits to any legitimate schools. If they do graduate, they're looking at getting a job that maybe pays $10 an hour, because they've taken out the max allowed in student loans. There's no freaking way they'll be able to make reasonable payments to pay those off. Many of them go into default. The schools don't care because they get to pocket the money. And the student ultimately gets fricked. Everybody in the world needs to read this. For profit colleges are about the worst type of education institution fathomable. One of my employers wanted to find out if their partner was being unfaithful so he offered to give me a pay raise and bonus in exchange for flirting with his husband. They were a gay couple, I'm a gay man myself. Ironically enough the suspected husband gave me the same offer to check up on his partner. I quit a few weeks after due to them constantly reminding me of the offer. They were trying to trick you into a threesome. The company I just left has been under fire for flipping accounts, which is fraudulent. My manager claimed she didn't know it was wrong, but for us to not do it again, even though I myself had never participated in anything even remotely similar to what they were doing. I was only a couple months into the job and still in training, so I barely even knew the basics of what the correct procedures were, and every time I tried to communicate or question procedure I was met with half acid, sketchy, borderline fraudulent tactics to employ, and being griped at for not making quotas. The final straw for me was when I had worked two weeks straight, on my own, and had to call my manager after a regular customer came in for the umpteenth billion time that day trying to get her daughter a new device. They still had a ton of items on their account that were still being paid for and didn't qualify for any options, and didn't want to shell out the cash to file an insurance claim. My manager flat out told me to perform a jury rigged and fraudulent maneuver to appease these people. When I told her that didn't sound legit she chided me, telling me that it wasn't illegal. I finished up that shift, fired off a resignation letter that night, filed complaints with who I could, and never looked back. Can you will I 5 for flipping accountants? I was already unhappy in my job before this but I was in the process of trying to get rid of a poor performing employee, something that my company made very difficult. This employee had a temper and my boss told me that the next time I had a talk with them to do say something that would make them angry enough to lash out and do something that we could fire them for on the spot. My boss basically wanted them to physically assault me. I obviously did not do that and handed in my resignation shortly after. It wasn't the main reason I quit but it helped move the cart along. My last place manufactured somewhat technologically complex things and we had several known quality issues. Eventually I changed roles and was responsible for automating some of our inline manufacturing tests. Most of the work was writing software. I designed a system that had a rigid pass-fail workflow as a unit was assembled. I was constantly asked to put in hooks to change test specs on a whim, or if a unit failed a specific test to hard code in a few retry attempts before marking it as failed. I exposed flaws in one of their tests and every attempt to explain it and to ask for a solution from our designers MFG engineers was dodged for 7 months. When it was rolled out and 70% failed the test I was asked to effectively fudge the results. When I asked why continue to do it at all then, they said some of their customers require it be done. 
They failed to see the irony or questionable ethics of the situation. Oh also, a test report sheet was automatically generated when a unit completed testing. I was asked to put in a function to cherry pick tests, that is, tests that were run with wider specs, to generate the report. I said a unit with wider specs should have a different part number, and was told the customer doesn't care apparently, something about them not knowing what they're buying anyway. Then they got confused and scrambled every time a large customer dropped them for quality issues. My former boss repeatedly told me to lie about our products, knowingly go against ordinances that could get us not only shut down but also my butt thrown in jail and rendered unable to work in my industry again. I said no, detailed the legal reasons behind it, and was laid off about a month later, with a sizable severance package and bonus, and letter of recommendation, so I was glad to go. I like to imagine he saw your dangerous to his illegal business practices and tried to make you quiet with the severance package. My first job at 16 years old was at a small town, mom and pop burger shop. Eventually we got a new manager who started making changes, which included handing out a church flyer with the table's bill. I was way uncomfortable doing that, and I still had faith at the time. He gave me a do it or you quit ultimatum, so I quit. Two other employees quit over further confrontations with the manager, and the rest left before the end of the week. The shop ended up closing after the owners bought their son a new ugly H2 Hummer thing instead of paying rent. Do it or you quit is something I've been told before. Well, it was more along the lines of take this deep pay cut or quit. I said no enough that I was escorted off the premises. When I filed for unemployment my former job told them I quit and was denied benefits. It took 2 months before I got my hearing with the unemployment board, but I won and got a sweet lump sum and went back to school. I didn't quit but got fired after standing up for myself and some other employees that were getting sexually harassed at work that is sexual comments, impromptu shoulder massages, parking lot stalking act. I ended up having to sue for wrongful termination. The worst part is the people who confided in me with these stories of harassment acted like I didn't exist because they didn't want to also get fired. I am happy I did it though. I'm able to wake up and look at myself in the mirror every day knowing I did what was morally right. Don't trust HR. Go to a lawyer first, then talk to HR. They are there to help the company not you. I've never worked anywhere that HR was useful for the employee. I worked in a locally owned fast food shop and one day I come in to cook the night shift and see all these old greasy, ketchupy fry boats sitting by the fresh new ones so I throw them away. The boss comes back into the kitchen, sees them on top of the trash and pulls them back out and says to use them. It turns out he wanted to cut down on his paper goods costs so he could get a bigger bonus at the end of the year. I refused to use them, quit that night and called the health department the next day. Upvoted for calling the health department. Thank you for helping your community. While working at a day camp as a lifeguard my boss asked me if I wanted to be a sugar baby to one of his friends that was older and too tired of the dating scene. I was like, wait, you're asking me to have sex with one of your friends for money? Just to clarify, he said yes. Ever since I avoided that camp like the plague. Keep in mind that I have known my boss since I was in kindergarten. I went to the camp as a camper, he was close with my father, and he had two daughters my age. I was working childcare, before and after school programs, summer camps and sports for a certain company back in my younger days. We were horribly understaffed and I, a lowly counselor, was left to accomplish the duties of a site manager a lot of the time. After a while I decided to ask for a raise, as a 19 year old at the time I couldn't have a site manager position, you had to be 21, but since I was doing the job of a site manager I wanted to be paid for it, nope, my supervisor turned down the idea without a second thought, she began having me watch roughly 100 kids as they slowly got bussed to another facility, I was left in a small room with no snacks and no way to keep them occupied except for their homework for a couple months. It was like trying to control a hurricane daily, and very, very illegal. I think at the time you had to have one adult for every 13 kids. I quit, after the insane hours, cutting corners thinking no one would report them and the crappy attitude of my supervisor. I was scolded for not lying to customers as a sales rep in the outdoor sporting goods field. 
I quit shortly after and the entire upper management team was recently fired. He thought I should continue to work for him for free long after it became clear he was a complete scam artist. I disagreed. I went to work for a mortgage loan originator. She was one individual working for a larger company, as an independent contractor, and I worked directly for her. In the course of the three months I worked for her, I saw her do a good amount of illegal things, completely nonchalant. Things like changing dates on documents, forging signatures, and making up verifications of employment so people would get approved for a loan. I was brand new in the industry, and I knew this was illegal, but I didn't know if it was super illegal, or more like jaywalking yes, illegal, but also, everyone does it. I finally emailed a friend of mine who worked at another company in the industry, explaining all of what was going on, asking for advice. She messaged me back immediately, quit now, today, I'll explain more later. So I did. I've never done anything like that, but it was 100% the right decision. When she messaged me back later, she explained that no, this is highly illegal, and by knowing about it, and participating in it to the level I was forced to, I was risking my own license, as well as hefty fines and jail time. Yeah, definitely a good call then. My boss stole the money he received for down payments on home improvement work and used it on bulls shopping sprees. When I was working for him he had me doing work in his office that limited my interaction with customers so I oblivious to his actions until I received a letter at the office from the law office representing one of our customers trying to track down my boss. It explained that my boss had signed a contract to build a large addition off the kitchen of the customer's home. They paid a 50% deposit of 55 k dollars and was told the job would be completed in 3 months, weather permitting. It was now 6 plus months later and all the homeowner has to show for it is a 12 feet x 18 feet hole in her kitchen that's been like that since the owner called her and asked for an additional 25 k dollars because he underquoted the job and ran out of materials. This poor woman wasn't even trying to sue my boss. She just wanted him to finish the job so she could get on with her life especially with winter approaching she wouldn't be able to continue living in her home with a wall missing in her kitchen that just had a tarp to secure it. The guilt I felt and the fear I had of being roped into an impeding lawsuit was enough motivation to quit my job that day. I worked at a prominent healthcare research institution. I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm a data guy, so typically in those roles, no advanced degree, just statistical data support, you get mentioned in the paper as a thank you or, at best, something like fourth author, but still, it's a nice resume CV builder to get an authorship on a paper published in a preeminent journal. I worked on a study with a young resident physician who was going to revolutionize the way condition X is treated. His study was to prove that an invasive chemical, read, pharmaceutical, Treatment of a condition was not only far cheaper, but also produced significantly better quality of life improvements over the traditional surgical option. He was the classic nightmare physician to work with from the beginning. He ended up manually adding and removing participants from the data population to cherry pick the best outcomes for the study. Once he found the combination that gave him the best results, he published. By this point in the research project, I had distanced myself as far as I could from it. I had to actually beg not to be listed as an author on the paper since I knew once the revelations about his behavior came to light it would be career suicide for me to have my name attached to that piece of crap. So, he went ahead and published anyway. Eventually his findings were questioned, his research methods were audited, and ultimately the paper was pulled from the journal. So I guess I didn't quit. But by pulling my name off the paper I was passing up a prominent publication that would have surely meant a raise or an offer at another institution had I wanted one. But I knew what he was doing would come back to him, and everyone attached to the paper, in the end. And it did. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.